All right, what's up, everybody? We're back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today, we're going to be recapping day one of free agency. Uh, a lot of stuff happening around the league. Free agency opening up. People going different places. Teams trying to build out their roster, stuff like that. We're going to get into the moves here in today's video. Uh, thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you do like the content around here, consider subscribing like turn notifications do us like that i'd really appreciate it. it really upset a lot uh join the membership if you want to learn more about the membership there's a video on my channel explaining all of it you can go back and watch that links to my twitter tiktok stuff like that description down below and uh, yeah don't waste any more of your time let's get right into it all right so we'll start with the biggest news that's happened so far on free machine that is paul george is going to the philadelphia 76ers he's signing a four-year 212 million dollar deal to join philly um of course there he has been he is the biggest domino in this year's free agency class and he ends up going over to the eastern conference going to the philadelphia 76ers uh, this was kind of something that we understood was a real possibility for a very very long time and then when he opted out it was like all right he was taking meetings with the clippers the sixers and the orlando magic and once the agency started um a couple of hours in we got reports saying that paul george agent and the clippers organization met and they were just so far away in a deal that they kind of both realized this isn't going to happen the Clippers even released a statement saying, yeah, PG isn't coming back. And so that's when it kind of was unofficially official that he's going to Philly. He met with them last night. And then at 3 in the morning, he signs or agrees to sign with the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, this is a move that I really like for PG. I like for both sides. But the 76ers, they have so much money that getting a third star was kind of the big priority for them, especially with, of course, Joel Embiid's injury history. Um, just needing a third guy just to get through the regular season, the playoffs, just in case injuries happen for Joel Embiid getting a guy like PG who now comes in as your second or even third option is really good PG gets to be in a lot lesser of a role um with around Tyrese and Joel Embiid and gets a lot more space in there you know he gets to kind of just do what he can do as a third option I feel like that's a good move there um and yeah the Sixers just get a third guy to put there now they have a new big three of Joel PG and Tyrese in the Eastern Conference that I think can do really, really good things. Of course, injuries are going to be a big part. PG also hasn't been the most healthy as well in the last couple of years. Um, but, you know, hopefully with a lesser role, PG could be a lot better with that. And the Sixers in general have just been building out their roster. You know, they only they came into this offseason with only four players under contract. And so they filled out their roster. They also signed Andre Drummond to a two-year $10 million deal. Drummond used to be a 76ers back in 2022. He was involved in the Ben Simmons trade. And he gets to come back to Philly. Andre Drummond had a really good season last year with the Bulls. Um, and he gets to go to Philly now, of course, again, with Joel Embiid's injury. Why not get a good backup in Andre Drummond, who, when he was a starter last year, he was absolutely amazing. One of the best rebounders in the league and to be able to just soak up some minutes. Andre Drummond can do. They also signed Eric Gordon to a deal. Uh, Eric Gordon, you know, at this point, he is a little older, but what he is out there, he's a shooter. He's just spacing the floor with Tyrese and Joel. They also re-signed Kelly Oubre to a two-year deal. Uber was a guy that was one of the last signings in free agency, had a really good year, and now gets awarded with a $16 million contract. He was really good for the Sixers last year as a more of a scoring punch off the bench, or maybe he starts. I don't know what happens. The Sixers still have to fill out, still have a lot more to fill out on their roster. But right now, just another really good score and defender for them. So the Sixers are making moves, man. The Sixers had so much money to play with. They're making moves. They're trying to build a contending roster, and they're looking... Like, they're going in a really, really good direction, honestly, right now. I really do feel like they're going in the right direction. Next thing I talk about is Catavius Cowell Pope. KCP is jumping ship, going to the Orlando Magic on a three-year, $66 million deal. And I love this fit for both sides. For the Orlando Magic, it was no surprise that their biggest weakness was their spacing. They didn't really have any spacing and shooting or look well shooters that, you know, you felt comfortable shooting the ball. And now you get a 40% three-point shooter in KCP, a guy that is amazing at catch and shoot. And, you know, he's going to really space the floor well for Paolo and Franz. So that's really good. And then defensively, he fits in as well. The Magic wore uh, around a top five defense for the entirety of last season. You added one of the better perimeter defenders in the league in KCP. Just a perfect, perfect fit for them. And KCP, a really nice payday, 22 mil for three years. That's an amazing payday. Gets to go to a team that really needs him, and he'll fit in very well. You know, just an amazing upgrade for the Magic, an amazing fit for all sides involved. I love, absolutely love this move for KCP to the Magic. Uh, Chris Paul also leaving. The Warriors 
waived him right before free agency start because he had a guarantee in his contract for $30 million yesterday, and they waived him before they can guarantee it. And now he's going to the San Antonio Spurs on a one-year $11 million deal. Another amazing move, I feel like. Chris Paul, at this point in his career, could be a mentor you know, for the Spurs. The Spurs, apparently he had a talk with Greg Popovich, and he really pop really sold Chris Paul on coming to San Antonio and helping build what they have over there. You know, obviously the Spurs with Wemby, they didn't have a point guard last year that can give him the ball. And now, not only do you get a point guard to give him the ball, but you give him one of the greatest point guards in NBA history. And one of the greatest, you know, playmaking and passing PGs in NBA history to pair alongside Wemby. So I think that's going to be good. It's also going to help Stefan Castle a whole lot as well uh, to be mentored by one of the greatest point guards ever in Chris Paul. I mean, that's just an amazing fit right there, an amazing move. And it'll make the Spurs better. Honestly, it'll make the Spurs better and I like it for Chris Paul as well because he gets to go to a team that he's actually valued. If he went to a team like the Suns, back to the Suns or the Lakers stuff, he wouldn't really be, he might be coming off the bench. Like he wouldn't be super valued. With the Spurs, he's very valued. He might start over there, you know, and he's going to be super valuable not only on the court, but off the court as a mentor as well. So I think this is just an amazing move from both sides. Chris Paul going to San Antonio. And then something that also happened right before I started recording the video Isaiah Hardenstein. Going to the OKC Thunder on a three-year, $87 million deal. Uh, yesterday, it was reported in Frazier that Shams said that the Thunder were in Oregon to meet with Isaiah Hardenstein, and now they finally get a deal done earlier today. Um, what a move by OKC as well. They've also been, make, been very active so far on the second day of free agency, but Isaiah Hardenstein goes to OKC. Of course, it would have been amazing to see him back in New York, a team up there, but he couldn't ignore this payday by OKC and go to a team that needs him. You know, Isaiah Hardenstein had an amazing year last year for the Knicks. He's a great big man, guy that's going to be really solid defensively. On offense, he can rebound. He can be physical in the paint. He can pass the ball, the floater game. Like, he's just well, he's just an amazing big man. And the Thunder gets someone that they really need. They really needed some size and some physicality. And Hardenstein can come in. He can play with Chet. He can play as a backup big to Chet. Like, he can do so many different things. I think this is just an amazing move by OKC, you know, to go grab him. To continue their amazing offseason. They also re-signed some of their core guys. Aaron Wiggins signs a five-year $47 million deal. And Isaiah Joe signs a four-year $48 million deal. Two very good role players for this team. Is that the Thunder are just building an amazing team. You know, they're a number one seed in the West and they've get they're getting better. So it's just this the Thunder just doing great, great things for them. Um, and then I want to hit on some more signings, you know, that I, that I want to talk about. Uh Jonas Valanciunas. Goes to the Washington Wizards on a three-year, $30 million deal. Very unexpected for me. Uh, there's some Laker interest over there, but JV gets to go to the Wizards where he's going to be, I guess, a starter. I guess maybe he thought that anywhere else he goes, he's going to come off the bench with the Wizards. They don't have a big man right now. I mean, Rashawn Holmes is their big man. Like, he can go to there and be a clear starter. Gets $10 million a year, which is honestly probably pretty good for J JV. And, you know, he goes to a rebuilding team where maybe he can get his value up and maybe he can get traded. You know, so he's on a good enough contract, or maybe that can happen. So I think that's a solid move. Um, Derek Jones Jr. goes to the LA Clippers, also on a three-year, $30 million deal. Derek Jones had an amazing year. He's a big part of a finals run for the Mavericks last year. He gets to go to the LA Clippers that needs some more wing play now, some defense, and he can go over there, gets a nice payday, gets to be in LA. You know, we'll see how the Clippers do next year because I don't know what, what's going to happen with that, with that team. They still have a lot more to do. But he gets to go over there, a nice payday, gets to be in LA. And we'll see how how he can continue that Mavericks year last year into this season. Uh, speaking of the Mavericks, they signed Najee Marshall to a three-year $27 million deal. And I think this could be a very sneakily good move for them. Najee Marshall isn't a big name or anything like that. He's a really solid role player. Kind of one of those Swiss Army knives, do a little bit of everything type dudes. Defensively, he's going to be able to lock in. Offensively, he can shoot the ball decently. He's a good ball handler. You know, just fits in, fills in the gaps. That's what Najee Marshall is. And I think he could this could be a very sneakily good signing for the Dallas Mavericks. You know, just kind of just a Swiss Army knife, do it all little role player that they have over there. Um also Tobias Harris going to the Detroit Pistons signs a two year fifty two million dollar deal. That happened right before I started recording. Uh Tobias, I mean, gets another good payday, twenty five or twenty six mil for two years. You know, gets to go to a young up and coming Detroit team, goes back to Detroit, gets you know, brings a veteran presence that's much needed to this Detroit team. Solid move from Detroit. Not really a long guarantee contract, just a little small two-year contract. And Tobias gets one more little payday. So why not? Um, also, Jalen Smith goes to the Chicago Bulls on a three-year $27 million deal. I think this could be another really, really good move that could work out for Chicago. 
You know, they don't have much big man play, especially with Andre Drummond leaving, and they really want to get rid of Vucevic. So why not bring in a young guy in Jalen Smith that has shown a lot of potential throughout his years, just hasn't really gotten a full chance and a full season opportunity to really show it. And with Chicago, this could be a team that he can show it. This could be a team that he could get consistent minutes for the entirety of the year, and he can really show what his potential is. And only getting it for $9 million? I mean, why not for the Chicago Bulls? I think this is a really, really good move for both sides, for Jalen Smith and for the Bulls. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all. Uh, some other things that happen, I guess. Um, Mason Plumley goes to the Suns on a one year deal. I think that's a really good move. Uh, the Suns getting some more, you know, experience in there. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr. is back in the NBA. He goes to the Clippers. Kevin Love goes to the Heat, resigns there on a two year, $8 million deal. Um, and then just now, while I was recording, Drew Eubanks goes to the Utah Jazz on a two year, $10 million deal. So, shout out to Drew Eubanks for getting some money, I guess. But yeah, still a lot more to decide in for agency, still a lot more factors and stuff to fall in place. But so far, got a lot of movement going on right now. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you do like the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, and all stuff like that. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps out a lot. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.